Can, can I ask this sincerely? Go ahead. Don't the Warriors kind of need to lose in an emphatic way this year to make sweeping changes? Because I think that there was an argument from a lot of just people that watch the Warriors. Hey, you know, the Lonnie Walker game goes the other way. You know, they could be in the Western Conference Finals. And I viewed it the other way, which was a Harrison Barnes shot goes in, you don't get out of the first round, right? And and it's maybe somewhere in between, right? Like maybe they just they were destined to lose in the second round. But I, I look at it as I, a part of me kind of wants them to well, like realize you're not that close and you do need to make some big time moves. Well, there might be some big time moves, but what are those big time moves? I, big time moves would be breaking up the core. That's big time. Because now we're getting into the territory. As I was driving home last night, when you look at Draymond Green's struggle and go one of seven, and they went at him in the first quarter, where, you know, he's six six, he's your small ball five. Mm -hmm. That's starting to catch up to the Golden State Warriors. The small ball lineup for big stretches at a time, it may work here and there, but they're not getting out and running. They're not getting out and getting out on the break with the small well, lineup. If he's and, hurt, too. And, and, and Hardenstein went yeah. right at Draymond. Yeah. He scored eight points in the first quarter. Yes. Eight points. So if that's your small ball five sitter, I don't know how successful long-term you can be with him playing yeah. a small ball five. So yeah. uh, I thought last year there would be sweeping changes, but what are those sweeping changes? Is it Clay moving on? Is it moving off from C3? Is it tra like trading Andrew Wiggins seems inevitable <laughs> at this point. Like everybody, like, you know, the front office is probably thinking, man, wait, what? I don't know if you're going to get the 2022 wigs back. I have no idea. A big move is trading one of the big boys, one of your core guys. That signals big moves when you have the most expensive roster in the NBA. Let me ask you, like when we looked at the San Francisco Giants uh, core, how long till you kind of didn't buy into there's still a championship core? Oh, it, after 2016, I was like, yeah, they may not be it because the second half of 2016 was nasty. Okay, so they went into the remember they went into the All Star break with the best record yeah. in baseball, and they came out right away, got swept in San Diego. Then they got swept in Boston for two games. Then they salvaged the game in extra innings at Yankee Stadium. Right out of the block, they were one and seven after the All Star break, and they went on this dive where starting pitching was erratic, mm -hmm. lineup was inconsistent, the ropes, the back end of the bullpen stuck. Uh, Santiago Casilla was struggling saving games. Remember that? I did. Then it kind of it reared its ugly head in Game Four against the Chicago Cubs and the NLDS, where the bullpen couldn't shut the shut the door after Matt Moore dealt in eight innings in that game. So after that, it was like, oh, maybe on the other side of the of course, twenty seventeen when they signed Mark Melanson, mm -hmm. first game of the season, boom, he blows the save. Bob Garner hits two home runs. They never would have the saved. Nights, man. They never would have saved. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I look at the, the Warriors, and they're on one end, I'm like, yeah, they are still a championship core from a couple years ago. But so much has changed since a couple so years ago. So the does that mean better. that they're a championship core today and moving forward? No. Yeah. And that, like that's, I think that's where I'm not sure where the line of demarcation is for other people. But for me, I think people are afraid to admit the reality of, that championship core can no longer be the core that leads you to a title. Yeah, I'm with it you. needs to be a different combination yep. of the core. I'm Those guys you. can supplement, but they I'm can't be the main dish. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. The only guy who could be the main dish it, maybe is Stephen Curry. Yeah, but he needs another. He needs a one B no, or a one A no to doubt. his one B. Like there's no doubt. He needs another. Like and I look at that backcourt, and that's why I, I I specifically I like pods. I don't think he can be the starter and the guy finishing alongside Curry. You need a more dynamic wing as a scorer and a more dynamic wing yep. as a defender I agree. alongside Steph Curry. I agree. That's you where it that. starts. You and this is where the Wiggins absence has been the most sad thing because I hoped he could supplement that. But no, that's the, that ship has sailed for me. The, the Wiggins absence alongside Clay's injuries where he was that yeah. wing who could defend yes. and help out yes. Steph Curry, you're missing that tremendously. But also, I think it's at the point where I look at the Western Conference, right? And by the way, a late addition to the program, Dave Fleming will join us at 8.55 to talk about nice. the signing of Blake Snell. I Dave got a Fleming. story about Dave. Uh, Dave Fleming, 8.55. Uh, Son's a ball player. Uh, look, think about the Warriors. And where was I at here? Where was I at? We, the championship just, core, Wiggins not being the the two-way player that they needed, Clay slipping a little on the defensive end, yeah, there was, how Steph needs a number two yeah, alongside there, of him. There was uh, there was something else I was going to say. How oh, I'm really here. a great co-host. No, how you love me. No, no, no. You're going to get me floor me seats? No, no, no. I'm not going to get to floor seats.
There's something about the combinations, having a one A, you love Brock B, Purdy. having Josh Jonathan Kamiga be there. I, I, I'm happy with I don't even know how you let's go to uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Vince in the city. Vince in the city, what's happening? <laughs> My bad, buddy. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Good morning. Um, it's the morning toast. I, We're cooked. Yeah, the Warriors might be cooked. I don't know. Um, but I agree with you, Shasky. I think moving forward, if they if the Warriors wanted to keep the core three, roles are going to have to change just like Clay's, where Draymond's role is going to be affected most now moving forward. Um, the other part of the equation is, you really got to take inventory of who's on your team and start getting rid of all these overlapping players and yes. positions because yes. just like we – I've said it since last season, and now everybody's starting to really see how much of a difference size makes. Yeah. But, that. like, when you got Sabonis and you got AD and Joker and all these bigs who can actually play more than just Lively. the old-school center position, we are absolutely cooked. There's no – the, the outside game is everybody's caught up to the three. Yep. So what what's going to be the leading change now for the Warriors moving forward? And I don't know what it is. I so, think it's going to have to just be bigger, faster, with more actual talent. But that's yep. hard to get with a salary cap and luxury mm-hmm. pack. So I don't know. It's just too much overlapping positions for me. You know what, Vince? You just jogged my memory. And that's where I was going. What's that? When I was discussing Draymond Green and watching Hartenstein go at him. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, you're too small. And the league has gotten better. Remember a couple of years ago, we're, I was, we we're having a conversation. You guys are getting on me about being a league pass guy. But I was like, look, man, Oklahoma City's coming. Minnesota is right around the corner. You know, Denver's Denver. What do all those teams have? Size, length, athleticism. Gobert, Nas Reed, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, Vanderbilt. You know what I'm saying? OKC, Chet Holmgren, Jalen Williams, Lou Dort. They got size everywhere. Josh Giddey's a big dude. You know what I'm saying? Denver, Aaron Gordon. Of course, the Joker, Nikola Jokic. Michael Porter Jr., who's played, he's played very well since the All-Star break. Wow, he looks like a new dude. And you got Contavious Caldwell-Pope chasing around big guards and point guards. You even look at the Lakers, size. You know, you look at Phoenix. Phoenix is a little fraudulent, but they got some size. Dallas. God bless their souls. Daniel Gafford and Lively the second. They've got size now. Guys who can run to the rim and block shots. They blocked 13 shots last Wednesday against the Golden State Warriors. Clippers, size. New Orleans, Valanciunas, Zion, size. All these teams have size, and that's where the league is caught up with the Golden State Warriors in terms of having rim protection, athletic bigs who can rim run. Now, TJD is a, is a great haul out of the 57th pick, but you need one more guy outside of TJD. You need one more big. Like, all these teams now, even last night, they were playing Jericho Sims for a quick stretch, and now they have Mitchell Robinson when he comes back, and OG Ananobi, and, of course, Hartenstein. All these teams have about two bigs who could be impact players or could be effective, whether it's the pick and roll, whether it's rim protection, contesting shots. The Warriors don't have that, and they need that. That's where the Wiseman pick really, really hurts today. Well, not it, having that pet out, whether it was Wiseman or Okongu, whoever it was, not having that size because everybody in the West now has size and rip protection, and they're athletic as the Warriors get older and slow down athletically. These teams have gotten younger, and they've gotten faster, and they've gotten more athletic, and they've gotten bigger. All of that is 100% spot on. Here, here's where I think it's become even more difficult. You can't have it both ways. And, and just hear me out on this. Daniel Gafford's a great example. He's making about $14 million this year. Because the Warriors are so over the luxury tax, you have to match up the contracts yep. almost identically. No doubt. And they and, and they have so many bloated contracts right now that no one wants to break up the three, right? Okay, well, then it's Andrew Wiggins or it's Chris Paul making 30 or $25 million. So to make a trade for someone at the deadline like Daniel Gafford... You have got to line up the contracts. I, I would have loved to have had him. I believe they attached a first round pick, and the guy Holmes or whatever was was swapped Richard back Holmes. and forth. But like B, they they've had so many bloated contracts, so they got to get their books in order yeah, like no that. Doubt. So not only is it they whiffed on a pick, but like financially they've been so oh. constricted that it has limited the amount of moves that they can make in these trades. So everyone's screaming, "Ah, oh, Bob didn't sign this guy." And get in. Right. Well, you he got can't. taxed. You're getting taxed by the dollar. You're getting taxed by the cent. Well, and and right now you're you're a repeat offender well, when it comes to the luxury tax. So it goes up and up and up exactly. each and every year. But also, Steph. Clay, Draymond, like with these locked in contracts that you can't move, 
it makes it more restrictive. And said, well, to field out the rest of the roster, you don't have those what are now quote unquote mid level contracts. They don't have a $14 million guy that well, they can swap to somebody else. Well, the thing is, you know, everybody says sweeping changes. And everybody points to Clay Thompson for whatever reason you point to Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's not even five of your biggest issues right now. Clay Thompson's accepted his role and he's been solid. And he's been more than solid coming off the bench. Not only that, not only that, Chris Paul, who people say, well, you, you can build Chris Paul hasn't been a problem. He's been a godsend for this team. Those two guys could walk, and yet I don't think those are two of the biggest issues on this roster right now. No, I would you know agree. But but Bonte, I would also say to you that like it's almost eighty million dollars combined into both players, and you know if you look around the league, like I I don't I don't know those, how many other teams. I know, but again, those but that's months, about those, those, are con team. those contracts were signed by different I, teams, I, I and that was a different that. But it players restricts, to it, restricts, it does restrict you. That, but, that's all I'm saying. But, like, but that's 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 that. I mean, I don't even look at the money when it comes to Clay. I no, don't even look at it. He's making moves. 43. Yeah, no doubt. You, but but Clay's one of your better shooters. No, this I agree. Team last night, what would you say? You. They lack shooting. Now we're going to move off of Clay? Would you lack shooting? No, no. Like, you know what I'm saying? If like, I it doesn't make down, sense. If I can get him down to a number that's a little more manageable and Clay. I can get under the cap, now Clay. I have the 120% swaps. And now uh, a it, Gary Payton, Kavon Looney well, trade for a guy like Daniel Gafford while attaching a first-round pick well, is feasible, whereas when you're so over the cap, no those types of trades aren't no, feasible. No, no, they're not. They're, the cap, and the cap's been an issue. It's complicated. But the, but the biggest issue this year, the biggest issue this year is the team hasn't been together. Whether it's been suspensions, that whether it's been with. injuries, whether it's been setbacks, this team hasn't been healthy and wholesome. So we don't even know what type of team they could be or what type, how good they could be. But now we're kind of getting an idea of who they are and what they are. And you need size and you need some wiggle room here. Now, Clay, when it comes to Clay Thompson, a lot of you Warrior fans out there who want Clay God, you may get your wish. And the problem is, you may get your wish and he may go to a contender and he may come back and light your ass up. Because that's what he's been doing since he's come off the bench. Shooting over 44% from the three-point line since coming off the bench. That's no longer a small sample size. So be careful what you wish for when it comes to this basketball team. In a league that's value shooting at a level it never has before, you want to get rid of the best shooters in this league? Be careful with that. Well, I think he brings value to the Warriors at the right price point. And obviously there's a nostalgia that's attached to it. But if the Warriors themselves, just hypothetically, if they decide to get in some sort of a divorce here, right, with, with Clay Thompson, they can't worry about where he goes next. What they need to do is they need to get the best person to fill right. that slot for them. And that, that's the only way you win one of those types of deals, right? In the divorce, you can't worry about who she marries Elsewhere, you, you need to worry about yourself. But if they think that they can keep him together and it, get him at the right price point, then I'm here for it. Like that, they need the shooting off the bench. And if he's going to accept that bench role and they can get a, a bona fide, you know, other wing uh, yeah. starter alongside him, dude, they'll be better for dude, it as an organization. I, I worry about the Lakers, man. The Lakers in that situation, the Clippers in that situation, the Bucks, the Sixers. There's going to be some teams that looks for a shooter like that. And trust me. There are teams who still value Klay Thompson I would at a very that. high level. I know so. That that is that is factual. That is factual. Now those are sources. That's what they tell me, and I believe them. Well, I mean, go back into Warrior history when they lost Baron Davis. They like panicked and they were like, "What are we going to do with the money? Oh, we'll give it to Corey Maggette." Yeah, that right? did not work out, and it worked out poorly. But had they, you know, pivoted and they got I don't know Chris Paul at that exact same time, it would have right. worked out well. Like you, if you're going to move off of players, you have to upgrade. So. Upgrade somewhere. I don't know that. I, I don't know how you upgrade. I don't, it, it's going to be a lot going on here if the Warriors do not make a deep run in the playoffs. Let's get to Al Alex in Atlanta uh, right now here on the roast. Alex, what's up, man? What's going on? Good morning. Hi, gentlemen. Good morning to both of you. Look, I, I absolutely agree that, that sweeping changes need to be made. I, I felt that way for a majority of the season. I felt that way in the off season when I thought their, their priority should have been trying to find more size and athleticism, and instead they settled for, well, okay, we got Chris Paul, who I think as an individual player has been good, but I think the improvements that they expected him to help make team-wide just haven't been there at the levels they were hoping for. But I, the biggest change that I thought they needed to make and up until very recently I thought was going to come was I thought they had to move on from Steve Kerr. I think that philosophically this team needs an overhaul when it comes to the head coaching position. I think that Steve Kerr is a guy that he loves his three guard lineups. He loves to play small ball and that just doesn't work anymore in today's NBA. And regardless of what they're able to do from a personnel perspective in terms of moving players around this offseason, none of that's really going to matter 
if you still have a guy like Steve Kerr in place who wants to he coach signed, he signed wants year. to run his system. Uh, Alex, Alex, like, I think talking about the coach is a little irrelevant because he signed a two-year extension, and it feels like he's locked in with, with, with Steph Curry. Yeah, and that's, that's unfortunately the problem. And so I, the next thing is, you know, I think moving off Andrew Wiggins is the most likely outcome at this point. I like the idea of keeping Clay at the right price point, but again, it, it seems like sticking with this core is just is not something that's going to result in any sort of playoff runs in right. the foreseeable future. And that's just the reality you have to live with now that you have, like you said, Chas, you locked yourself into Steve who, Kerr. Who, I don't think you're going to be able to see enough sweeping change. Okay, let me ask you this. Is, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm looking at the deck that he's been. I don't know where he ranks in terms of best coaches in the NBA right now. Who do you think the best coach in the NBA is right now? I mean, if it were me, I would say it's probably Eric Spolstra okay. because he's been the most flexible head coach over the last 10 years where he's also doghouse guys. He's always able to make it work. Yeah. He's also doghouse guys as well. Like he does that as well. What's Let's wrong with that? What, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying like, what, what, what would he have? House, where would he have, do. where would he have this warrior team? This warrior team? That's a good question. I would think that, you know, I think you'd have him a little further along, probably at a seven seed, just because okay. I think he would have given guys like Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga more minutes last year than Steve Kerr did, instead of giving those minutes to guys like Anthony Lamb and Ty Jerome. Okay, interesting. So there's still the seven seed. I, if I'm Joe Lake, I still don't think that's good enough. And I'm sure the Warriors well, themselves would admit that. Watching Joe Lake, of course, saw yesterday. He was not pleased with the performance last night at Chase Center, no doubt. The Warriors are not pleased. It was just... A lackadaisical effort. It was lackluster effort, man. It just can't happen at this point of the season.